Hello everyone. Welcome to Engineered Learnings. Engineered Learnings has been created as an effort to help and reach out to all the engineering students, aspirants and professionals out there with the basic understanding and the crux of the topics important for placements, vivas, semesters, competitive examinations and all types of interviews. So let's go to today's topic. Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to talk about a very core cool technical topic that is priming of pumps uh, and we are going to come out of topics like uh, placements and interviews that we have already discussed in the previous videos. Those videos are going to definitely come in the later future. But uh, today we are going to focus on a very very important uh, technical topic that is often asked in the interviews but, but misunderstood by most of the industry people as well as well as by students. I have heard a lot of students uh, ponder upon the topic of uh, priming of pumps and confusing it up with terms like NPSH and cavitation. Now let me tell you this is a notion and this is a uh, very deceptive topic in terms of the fact that people often correlate this with NPSH and cavitation. Both are phenomena, NPSH, cavitation and priming, These all these are terms associated with centrifugal pumps but trust me priming or NPSH or cavitation, they are not correlated or interrelated to each other. Yes, they may have some relations, but the priming term is directly not correlated with NPSH or cavitation. Th those are different phenomena. Now, if you have to understand about NPSH or cavitation, NPSH, net positive suction head and cavitation, what is the problem of cavitation associated with centrifugal pump? You might get this in a different video. I will be posting the link of the same in the description box and you have to refer to that if you want to understand the NPC in cavitation of centrifugal pumps. But today's topic is priming of pumps. So first of all, let me make it very clear. Do not confuse it up with cavitation. Cavitation phenomenon and priming phenomenon are two different phenomena. They may be like sounding the same or uh, like you may think that they are interrelated or correlated but trust me they are not. So NPSH and cavitation is a different thing, is a different domain altogether. So let's keep this aside and let's discuss priming. What is priming? So basically to understand priming, you need to first understand the concept of a centrifugal pump. How does a centrifugal pump actually work? Uh, so what, what, what happens in a centrifugal pump is, basically the fluid comes into the pump, uh, a motor runs it and it rotates uh, a shaft and it in turn rotates, it in turn rotates an impeller of a pump. So a motor rotates, a shaft rotates and impeller rotates. For a pump. So what happens is when the impeller rotates, it discharges the fluid to the discharge and it creates a suction which takes in fresh fluid. So if we consider this, this is a 3D diagram and if the suction fluid is going inside from outside the board into the pump, so what happens is this fluid is going into the pump, the pump impeller is rotating, the fluid falls into the eye of the impeller, it is thrown to the periphery with high velocity. So whenever the fluid is entering in this position, it is gaining a centrifugal force or a centrifugal momentum and it in turn is thrown to the periphery from the eye with a high velocity. So straight away the kinetic energy increases, the momentum increases due to the centrifugal force, due to the centrifugal force, the suction fluid gains. So centrifugal force is the driving force here because of which the suction fluid from the eye of the impeller is thrown to the periphery with a high velocity or a high kinetic energy. Now what happens is there is a restriction. Whenever this casing of the pump is throwing the fluid with a high velocity to the periphery in the discharge line there is a sudden constriction. There is a sudden constriction due to the sudden constriction the free flow of the liquid is disturbed. So the high velocity fluid that was flowing with a high kinetic energy suddenly freezes the constriction and its velocity drops. Its velocity drops. Now where will this energy go? The kinetic energy, the high amount of kinetic energy the liquid initially possessed. Due to the drop in velocity, the drop in kinetic energy occurs. But conservation of energy definitely works. Definitely not friction is take, not taking away the entire energy. So the kinetic energy is basically converted into pressure energy or potential energy, whatever you may call it, pressure energy or stagnant energy, uh, pressure energy getting high. So what happens is, 
the velocity at this point of time drops and the pressure rises. So the velocity head is converted into pressure head, also going by Bagnoli's theorem. So what happens is, a simple explanation of the fact, this is the casing of the pump, this is the impeller of the pump, the motor is rotating a shaft, the impeller is rotating, creating a suction force, liquid coming into the suction is thrown away to the periphery with high amount of velocity, high amount of kinetic energy. When it reaches the periphery, when it reaches the periphery, the velocity decreases, the kinetic energy decreases and is converted into pressure energy and the velocity decreases and the pressure head increases. So what happens is velocity head decreases, pressure head increases. This is how the discharge is at high pressure. From low pressure, the discharge is at high pressure. This is what the activity of a pump is. So basically the pump is creating a flow which in turn is getting converted into pressure head. This is how a centrifugal pump works. Now you have to understand as soon as the pump starts rotating how does it create a suction? It creates a suction because of the fact that its discharge is working. So it gives basically when the impeller starts rotating it gives a discharge and the force that it gives to the discharge, the centrifugal force or the momentum that it creates at the discharge is the analogous momentum that similar or analogous type of momentum or energy or force is created in the suction as well. So what happens is, let me explain with a simple example, simple example supposedly. Uh, let me, since you have understood the concept, since you have understood the concept, let me rub this out and let me draw a simple example that we learned in class 11 or 12. Supposedly this is a string, there is a bucket attached to the end of a string and the bucket is basically going through a circular path. So what happened is when the bucket is empty, when the bucket is empty, supposedly the bucket is experiencing a centrifugal force of mv square by r and to keep it in position we need to apply a centripetal force of mv square by r where r is definitely the radius of the circle that it is rotating in and v is the tangential velocity that is the vt, so vt, vt. So tangential velocity is vt, m is the mass of the bucket and the contents in it, along with the contents in it. So what happens is, if supposedly we are rotating an empty bucket, empty bucket, the centrifugal force that the empty bucket experiences is mv square by r, where m is low because the bucket is filled up with air and the bucket itself has some mass. But whenever you fill that bucket with water, completely with water, supposedly it is completely filled with water, the m shoots up. As soon as the m shoots up, the mv square by r R shoots up. So the centrifugal force and the, cent and the correspondent centripetal force shoots up. So you are realizing the point that whenever there is a centrif high centrifugal force to keep it in position we need a high centripetal force as well which is increasing when the mass is increasing because clearly when the mass is more the momentum will be more mv will be more the momentum will be more mv square by r the corresponding force will be more all depends on mass. So, whenever the mass of the, uh, of the fluid is high, it will need a high amount of, uh, it will create a high amount of corresponding force or corresponding momentum. Similar is the case of a centrifugal pump. So, what happens in a centrifugal pump is, whenever the casing is supposedly filled up with completely water, so supposedly the casing of the pump is completely filled up with water, what happens is, it throws away the uh, water or liquid, uh, whatever, be it to the periphery. Whenever it throws away the liquid to the periphery, it creates a high amount of momentum or high amount of force and analogous and um, an analogous amount of force is also created in the suction. So it depends on the momentum. If the outlet momentum is mv, an analogous amount of momentum that is mv will be created at the suction as well. Since it is throwing at a high velocity, uh, it is throwing at a high momentum rather I would say it will suck in at a high momentum as well. So the suction force will be very high. It is, the suction force will be mv squared by r, analogous to mv squared by r, if the discharge is at mv squared by r. So we are seeing that it depends on the mass of the fluid. Now what happens is, the pump is designed for pumping liquid. Now if this casing is supposedly that the liquid has drained and it is completely filled with air, 
Now there, there is the question when the priming of the pump is required. We always say that the pump should be completely primed or completely the casing should be filled with water, water before starting a centrifugal pump. Now this is the concept of priming. Priming of pumps is basically ensuring the fact that the casing of the pump is completely filled with the liquid that you are pumping in. So what happens is if this is not filled in with the liquid, if this is filled in with the air, what happens is it throws with the momentum of MV. Now the M decreases. M decreases because we know that V V is equal to M by D. That is, volume is equal to mass by density. Now we see that mass is nothing but volume into density. Now for the same volume of liquid and same volume of air, the volume remains the same, that is constant. The density of air is very very less. So the mass is less. Since the mass is less, the analogous amount of force that is there at the discharge will be less. The momentum is less. The momentum is less or the force is less. The centrifugal force or the momentum at the discharge is less. So analogous amount of momentum that is created at the suction, analogous at suction will also be less. So discharge momentum or discharge force is getting less because the mass of the throwing particle or the thrown particle uh, or the thrown entity is less because the air is having the same volume of air is having a lesser mass than the same volume of water or same volume of liquid. So whenever we are pumping out air, the suction force is very less or the suction momentum is very less and this is not enough to pull the liquid in the tank. Suppose if the liquid is till this level and the uh, casing is completely filled with air so whenever the impeller is rotating it creates a discharge momentum of mv or discharge force of mv square by r at the periphery and that discharge momentum analogous amount of momentum is created at the suction and that analogous momentum is not enough because the mass of the air is very less so it keeps on running by itself but the liquid cannot rise through the suction into the casing and it will at some point of after some point of time since it is designed for uh, transferring liquid only from low pressure to high pressure it will cause overheating because no liquid is coming in it is only air that is circulating in the system and liquid is not being able to pull so the entire system the entire system will result in overheating overheating and this is why and finally damaging the impeller or the casing of the pump overheating of the casing and this is why you need this. This is why you need priming. So what does priming do? Priming, there is a priming valve. So basically, supposedly this is my casing of the pump and this is my centrifugal pump and this is my discharge of the pump and this is my suction of the pump. So what happens is there is a valve that is given here. This is the valve and this is called the priming valve. Priming valve. So what happens is they open this valve and fill this valve with water. So, or the liquid that is, has to be transferred. So it fills up the casing entirely with water. So whenever the impeller rotates, the motor rotates, the shaft rotates and the impeller rotates, it discharges liquid only, which is having a high momentum and hence at the suction also, an analogous amount of high momentum is created, which creates enough suction for the liquid to be sucked in. But if this casing is filled up with air, the momentum that is created at the suction or at the discharge is not enough to pull in the resultant liquid from the tank. So this is why the pump casing or the pump impeller should always be filled up with water. And this is where we ensure priming. So through the priming valve, if it is filled up with air, so you need to fill it up with water or you need to fill it, fill it up with the liquid. You cannot allow overheating of the casing by only providing air because it will never create the suction. Now some pumps are self-priming. Self-priming in the sense that whenever the pump is there in the, supposedly this is my casing of the pump and this is my pump, this is my discharge and this is my suction. So what happens is the liquid level by atmospheric pressure, P atmospheric, rises up enough such that it covers the entire pump with liquid. So the liquid rises up enough to cover the entire casing or the entire impeller filled up with liquid till the discharge maybe. So that is not a problem. But if it is half filled or if it is filled till this level, there occurs the problem because there is an air associated with it. And whenever there is an air, the analogous momentum is going to be less and the liquid is not going to be pulled in. 
Now, apart from centrifugal pumps, positive displacement pumps are often called self-priming pumps. There is also a question that is very popularly asked in interviews that why are only centrifugal pumps chosen for priming? It's not that uh, centrifugal pump, it's not that um, positive displacement pumps require priming, but why do centrifugal pumps require priming? Because centrifugal pump is working on the principle that the discharge, that suction is analogous to the discharge momentum. So if the discharge is uh, with air, it doesn't create enough suction for the liquid to be pulled in. Whereas for a positive displacement pump, supposedly for a positive displacement pump, what is the principle? This is the piston cylinder arrangement and this is my piston supposedly and this is my cylinder. So whenever it goes upstroke, it creates enough suction for the liquid to be pulled into the section and then it pressurizes it enough so that it can be gone through this outlet valve. So this is my outlet. This is my discharge and this is my inlet, this is my suction, suction and this is discharge. So this is my discharge. So what happens is in a positive displacement pump, in a centrifugal pump it is a continuous motion pump. So what happens is it throws away, it pulls in, it throws away, it pulls in, not in case of positive displacement pump. Positive displacement pump creates a vacuum, pulls in the liquid, then discharges it by creating a pressure. So it's a, a basically a two-stroke process. So one stroke you pull in and one stroke you discharge. So while you are sucking in, there is no discharge. Whereas for centrifugal pump, there is a continuous discharge maintained. So if you calculate like flow rate of a uh, centrifugal of single centrifugal pump over time is constant, whereas for a, uh, for a positive displacement pump, it is pulsating. So it is discharging again. It is sucking in, then again discharging, then again sucking in, then again discharging. So this is the pulsating motion. Pulsating motion for a positive displacement pump with time. Single positive displacement pump. So you are getting the point of it all. That centrifugal pumps work on analogous momentum principle, whereas positive displacement pump work on the sucking in, then discharging. So it is a self-priming pump. Whenever it is creating a suction force, it is creating a vacuum, it, the liquid drives into the pump casing itself, creating self-priming. So positive displacement pumps, positive displacement, displacement pumps are self-priming. Because the working principle is different. Whereas centrifugal pumps needs priming, you need to ensure that the casing of the pump is completely filled with water. Because when it pumps out water, it creates enough suction force to pull in the next uh, amount of water. This is what is the concept of priming. Priming is the filling out the casing or the impeller of a pump with completely the liquid that needs to be sucked in. There should be no passage for air or no air bubbles or anything should be present within the system. So that is, I think, I will conclude the priming of pumps here. I think you have understood the concept of it all. If you liked our video, like it, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much.